General Ibrahim Babangida's legacy is complex and polarizing. As Nigeria's military head of state from 1985 to 1993, he inherited two nicknames from the Nigerian press, Evil Genius and Maradona. While some acknowledged that Babangida's rule had both positive and negative aspects, others view him as a symbol of political opportunism and authoritarianism. The Babangida era was marked by significant political, economic and social changes. How one remembers Babangida largely depends on one's perspective and experiences during his rule. Some remember Babangida for his economic policies, including the Structural Adjustment Program implemented in the late 1980s, which aims to liberalize the Nigerian economy but also led to austerity measures, devaluation of the currency and economic hardships for many Nigerians. While others remember him for his government's human rights violations, including the censorship of the media and the assassination of frontline journalist Delegiwa. The Babangida regime was also associated with widespread corruption, which many believe had a lasting negative impact on Nigeria's governance and institutions. While in office, Babangida promised a transition to civilian rule but repeatedly postponed elections. His annulment of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, widely considered Nigeria's freest and fairest election, led to political instability and the eventual military coup that brought an end to the Third Republic and the emergence of General Sani Abacha as Nigeria's seventh military head of state on November 17, 1993. When Major General Ibrahim Babangida, as the Chief of Army Staff, overthrew the Head of State, Major General Muhammadu Buhari, on August 27, 1985, one of the first actions as the country's new ruler was to allow Nigerians to decide, through public debates, whether to accept the $2.5 billion International Monetary Fund loan the Buhari regime had been negotiating for. After the terror of the Buhari years, Nigerians appeared to have found a statesman in military uniform. In a curious contrast to the rigorous and serious Muhammadu Buhari, Babangida's warmth and endearing gap-toothed smile made it simple for people to believe him. In actuality, the differences between the two regimes went much beyond simple personality similarities. In practice, Babangida showed himself to be entirely different from his predecessor. Hundreds of Second Republic politicians who had been imprisoned and convicted by Buhari were released from prison as the new head of state flung open the prison doors. Ibrahim Babangida promised to run an open government that is uncharacteristic of a military one and responsive to the longings and aspirations of all Nigerians breaking from the high-handedness of the Buhari Idiagbo regime. He also repealed the objectionable decree number no. 4 of 1984, with which the Buhari regime had restrained the media. Less than a year after he took office in 1985, Nigeria's foreign debt had increased to $18 billion, up from $3.4 billion in 1980 under President Shehu Shagari. By the end of the decade, it would exceed $30 billion, while the country's external reserves would be less than $2 billion. Oil prices have been falling for three years in a row, when in January 1986, 
they finally reached a record low since the 1980s. However, Babangida made all the proper wards without boosting the economy. And on October 1st, 1985, at his Independence Day speech, when he had only been in office for two months, the military head of state declared a state of economic emergency that would last for the following 15 months. As most Nigerians were led to think, that address included a detailed strategy for economic rebuilding. The strategy put forth by the Babangida dictatorship was composed of a suspension of new foreign debt, encouragement of agricultural and industrial development, restriction of importation to necessities, banking sector reform, and privatization. The Babangida regime oversaw the largest development of the government bureaucracy in Nigerian history. The Minabon general was an expert at leading the government's forceful programs to combat poverty and inspire rural citizens. In an effort to follow through on its pledges to run an open, populist administration, his government unveiled program after program. In 1986, Babangida founded the Mass Mobilization for Self-Reliance Social Justice and Economic Development, MAMSA. This was followed in 1987 with the establishment of the Directorate for Food, Roads and Rural Infrastructure Directorate, DFRRI, with the goal of promoting agriculture and transforming Nigeria's rural landscape by supplying modern infrastructure. Ibrahim Babangida established the National Directorate of Employment, NDE, National Economic Reconstruction Fund, People's Bank of Nigeria, National Board for Community Banks, Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, Nigerian Export Import Bank, Nexim, and the Urban Development Bank in the years that followed. Babangida's fiscal conservatism gradually vanished as billions of naira were poured into an endless transition program and $12 billion in unexpected crude oil revenue from the Gulf War that caused an increase in oil price could not be accounted for in the early 1990s. Babangida was also an expert at distributing patronage through political appointments which were typically made for prominent opposition figures and the dubious distribution of rich oil blocks. Babangida secretly enrolled Nigeria, an avowedly secular state, as a full member of the Organization of Islamic Conference, OIC, a body that describes itself as the voice of the Muslim world just months after promising to run a government in collaboration with the populace. The general regretted the significant role the public sector has played in economic progress, despite the fact that there aren't many obvious outcomes to back it up. Ironically, the evil genius would create a massive expansion of government over the course of the following five years. Ibrahim Babangida secretly implemented some of the most extreme loan requirements of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, including the devaluation of the Nigerian Naira and the elimination of subsidies, the most notable of which was the fuel subsidies, despite the decision of the Nigerian people to reject the IMF loan. This led to protest where five students at the Amadou Bello University in Zaria were killed when mobile policemen broke into the campus to put an end to anti-IMF protests in 1986. Babangida emphasized the urgent need for Nigerians to tighten their belts, saying that it would be a painful but necessary step toward vibrant economic health and the prelude to future riches. These modifications, 
which he named the Structural Adjustment Program, SAP, were implemented in 1986 and had a negative effect on the citizens of Nigeria. The middle class started to disappear as purchasing power decreased and inflation increased, which eventually sparked the 1989 SAP riots that broke out three years later. However, Ibrahim Babangida's two key areas of weakness were his record on human rights and his political transition plan. In December 1985, a group of soldiers, including his close friend, Mamanjia Vatsa, were detained on suspicion of plotting to overthrow the Babangida regime, which had only been in power for four months. On March 5, 1986, Wale Shoinka, Chinwa Achebe, and John Pepe Clark, three of Vatsa's poetry colleagues, made the decision to go to the head of state to plead for compassion after Vatsa had been found guilty and given the death penalty. However, Babangida assured the group that he would exert all effort to save his close friend. Maman Vatsa was executed alongside the other alleged plotters a few hours later. Babangida's contempt for dissent grew as opposition to his rule increased. He frequently shut down or banned media outlets and intimidated journalists, members of civil society and labor unions with the help of state agencies like the State Security Service, the Directorate of Military Intelligence and the police. Babangida also issued a number of harsh laws meant to put an end to all criticism and he occasionally deported international critics without hesitation. General Ibrahim Babangida would be remembered for his failed transition program, whose end date swiftly turned out to be a mirage, first in 1990, then in 1992, and finally in 1993. Early in his rule, the head of state established a political bureau to, in a sense, launch the national discussion about a workable future political culture and framework for Nigeria. The political bureau was quickly followed by a constituent assembly, which in 1989 drafted a new constitution for the nation. In 1989, he also established the Social Democratic Party and the National Republican Convention by presidential proclamation. Then, in 1991, Babangida released a consensus list of powerful politicians he claimed were forbidden from taking part in the transition program. He nullified the outcomes of the party's October 1992 presidential primaries which led to the conduct of new primaries in March 1993. On June 23, 1993, he annulled the presidential election results of June 12, 1993, which were thought to have been won by Chief MKO Abiola, a wealthy businessman. At this juncture, the Nigerian people had become tired of Babangida's dribbles, and on August 27, 1993, Massive protest, particularly in the southwest, compelled him to step aside. This time, he grudgingly gave up power exactly eight years after grabbing it, but he did it in a classic Maradona fashion by appointing Chief Ernest Shonekan, a British educated lawyer and businessman, to lead an interim national government. However, the interim national government collapsed after just 82 days and the Third Republic ended after Shunekon's purported resignation and the emergence of General Sani Abacha on November 17, 1993. Consequently, the following decisions come into immediate effect. The interim national government is hereby dissolved. 
the national and state assemblies are also dissolved. The state executive councils are dissolved. The brigade commanders are to take over from the governors in their states until administrators are appointed. Where there are no brigade commanders, the commissioners of police in the states are to take over. All local governments stand dissolved. The directors of personnel are to take over the administration of the local governments until administrators are appointed. The National Electoral Commission is hereby dissolved. All former secretaries to federal ministries are to hand over to their director generals until ministers are appointed. The two political parties are hereby dissolved. All processions, political meetings and associations of any type in any part of the country are hereby banned. Any consultative committee by whatever name called is hereby prescribed. Decree 61 of 1993 is hereby abrogated. Nigerians would suffer another military dictatorship for nearly six years until Olusegun Obasanjo, a retired general and a former military head of state, was sworn in as Nigeria's first president of the Fourth Republic on May 29, 1999. On October 19, 1986, frontline journalist Delegiwa was murdered by a letter bomb in Ikeja, the capital city of Lagos. He was just 39. Preliminary police investigations stated that senior officers of Babangida's intelligence services, who had hounded Giwa in his final days, had questions to answer regarding his death. The mystery of the Delegiwa assassination remains unsolved even nearly 40 years after the unfortunate incident. You can learn more about the Giwa assassination in our next episode.